What's up, YouTube? This video is a compilation of a tutorial series I did on my Instagram account about all the steps that go into making one of my drum videos. This has been an evolutionary process, but with 10 years of drum covers on my channel, I felt like I was in a good enough spot now to show you some insight on what I've been doing recently. I know my process will change as I continue to learn and grow and gather new gear, but I hope you can still get some value out of this tutorial, whether it helps give you new ideas or if you just enjoy seeing what goes on behind the scenes. If you have any questions at any point, just drop a comment and let's talk about it. Now get ready to take some notes. So, Eloy Casagrande wants us to cover his new Sepultura song, Agony of Defeat. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. But for this one, I'm going to take you through my entire process of how I do a drum cover. Now for this particular song, I've already jammed to it a couple times. It's simple and easy and it allows a lot of room for creative interpretation, which always makes it more fun for me. Now step one, it's simple and easy, it's just to obtain the song. We need the actual audio file so that we can load it into our DAW and play along to it in the session. Now you can purchase the song off of iTunes, it only costs you a dollar, it helps support the artist, and it gives you the file that you can actually download and then put into your DAW so that you can record along to it. There's other online stores that you can buy from as well, such as Google or Amazon. We just need that song file. Importing the song directly into your DAW as opposed to streaming it from some other location will make it much easier to edit and work with the file later on in the process. So once you got your song and you moved it into your DAW, it's time to move to step two. Step two, we need to set our tempo map. I have a metronome app on my phone called Tempo Advanced. And so what I'll do is I'll play the song and I'll tap along to get the tempo. I then plug that tempo into my logic session and check how it lines up with the transients and adjust accordingly. So normally, songs are recorded and edited to a consistent tempo, but on a song like this where it's not recorded to a click, I'll go through and make my own tempo map. So in logic, I expand the global tracks so I can see my tempo lane. I then expand the list editors and select the tempo tab. Then I line up the first drum hit to the beat and add a tempo event. I scroll over a few bars and see how the transients line up and adjust the tempo of the last tempo event until the transient is on the grid. Scroll over a few more bars and adjust the tempo until it lines up again. So do this throughout the song and you'll end up with your own tempo map that you can use to record along to. It's also cool that you can visualize those tempo tendencies and anticipate them for when you're performing. And now that we have our tempo map, we're ready to go set up for recording. All right, drum cover step three. We need to mic up the drum set. I have a microphone on every single drum and they're rather cheap microphones. I have a Pile Pro set of microphones I got from Amazon for less than $200 and I have those mixed in with CAD microphones that I got from a buddy of mine. My focus with this is so that every drum can have its own individual signal, which will help immensely later on in the process. For the overheads, I spent a little bit of money. I have an XY pair of Octava MK-012s. I have a split pair of Rode M5s. And with the overheads I have from the pile set, I have one over the ride cymbal, and then I have one on the back wall to use as a room mic. All these microphones are fed into two Tascam 16x8 interfaces. Having two interfaces gives me 16 preamps to control input gain. The channels 1 through 6 on the top unit are patched into channels 11 through 16 on the bottom unit, and then the bottom unit is plugged into my laptop through USB. Make sure you take careful note of what microphone you plug into what input. And then for the next step, we're going to set up our session and our input levels. Alright, drum cover step 4. We need to set up our logic session for recording. I have a logic template project that's already routed and configured, and I just copy that into every new drum cover folder that I do. So let's check it out. I have my tracks ordered by drum type, kick, snare, toms, overheads, and then room. I have all of these tracks in a group, and then in the group settings, I've enabled editing, quantize locked, input monitoring, and record. It's important to note that you can only set your inputs while your laptop is plugged into your interface. So once you're plugged in, you can assign each one of your microphones to an input in Logic. Enable record on one of these tracks and it will enable for the entire group. In Logic, right click on the top bar and select customize control bar and display. Make sure that you have pre-fader metering enabled. Now activate that and then you'll see the input level of your source audio independent of the volume slider. Now we can hit stuff and check our levels. Use the preamp knobs on the Tascam to adjust the input gain of each mic. When we hit a drum, we want the signal to be high in the green but stay out of the yellow. Once our input gain is configured, let's move to step five. Drum cover step five. We're almost ready to record, now let's do the final setup. My goal for this process is for everything to be streamlined. Everything that we've done so far can be done ahead of time. But this is the step I do right before I record my performance. First thing I do is I swap out my cheaper practice symbols with my more expensive performance symbols. 
And now it's time to change into our performance clothes. All right, now we're in our professional clothes looking super serious. We look official and people are gonna take us seriously. And now it's time to set up the lights. I'm currently using four lights, a desk light by my left foot, a portable RGB light by my right foot, a ring light up in front, and a flood light up top. And now it's time to set up the cameras. I have a variety of tripods and mounts that I leave in place. That way when it comes time to record, I can just take the cameras off the charging block and put them in their place. Wide angle cameras and lenses are great for being able to put the cameras up close to the action and then still being able to see everything that's happening. You generally want one or two cameras to capture the entire kit, and then the more cameras you add, the more specialized you can make their focus. More video angles also gives you more options when it comes to video editing. And now that we have our microphones placed, our logic sessions set up, our cameras ready to go, it's time to start recording. Drum cover step six. It's time to record your performance. This can be the most stressful and intimidating part of the whole process if you allow it to be. Yes, you are on camera and once you hit record on the cameras, you're limited by your battery and your SD card capacity. But if you think about the fact that you're recording, you're gonna stress yourself out, you're gonna tense up and you're gonna compromise your whole performance. We need to set all of that aside in our minds. We need to focus just on playing the drums and expressing ourselves. The key here is to have fun. You play drums because you love it. You wouldn't get this far if you didn't get fulfillment out of what you do. All you need to do now is fully and completely embrace that passion and release it. Listen to the music, get into it, and reflect the emotion of that music that you're listening to and performing. Get hyped up, get psyched, and show the world what you're made of. This is your time to shine. You've practiced your ass off for this. Everything you've done up to this point has prepared you for this, and you're ready now more than you ever have been. Hit record, and for the next few minutes, just let loose and give it everything you've got. Let's do it! Drum cover step seven, import and organize your files. So we've recorded our performance and brought our laptop and cameras back home. Now we need to import the footage, the logic session, and get our artwork. First, we need to set up our folders. I make a working folder on my fastest hard drive, which for me is just on the desktop. This ensures that I can work as quickly as possible. In there, I make three folders, mix, vid, and art. Once you import all the footage from your cameras, just use quick time to cut the footage to only the final take. If you're unsure of when to make the cut, find the part in the footage where you stop playing and make that your end mark. From that time in the video, subtract the length of the song and then make that your start mark. When you trim, your video should be as long as the song. Export the new video into the vid folder and give it a sensible name. Repeat this for each camera that you have. This saves storage space and reduces final cut render sizes. Now transfer your recording from the laptop to the desktop and put that in the mix folder. And then last, we need the thumbnail elements. Download the song's album art and band logo. Then select your favorite screenshot from the video and capture that. Move these to the art folder. Now that we have all of our assets on hand and organized, let's move to step eight. Drum cover step eight, convert your audio performance to MIDI. In Logic, create an instrument track and load up Superior Drummer 3. Pick a preset kit that reflects your own drum set. Open your Logic project package and locate your audio files. Select the audio tracks from your drum mics. Import these tracks into the Superior Drummer 3 tracker. Make sure that you set each track to its corresponding sample instrument. Use the tracker to create MIDI notes from your performance. This is where we directly benefit from having a close mic on every drum. Use a performance video as extra reference so you can visualize your performance and use that to understand your audio waveforms. Once you finish, close Superior Drummer. In that MIDI track, create one MIDI note at the beginning of the song and then one at the end. Export this track as a MIDI file into your mix folder. This MIDI file will contain the tempo map that we programmed in step two. Once that's exported, you can delete this MIDI region. Reopen Superior Drummer and load in that MIDI file with the tempo map. Click Export. In the tempo menu, select Tracker Tempo Map. Drag the all tracks combined MIDI block into the Superior Drummer track in Logic. Mute the tracks in the Superior Drummer tracker. Finally, line up the MIDI with your audio. For the next step, we'll set up our tracks and audio routing. Drum cover step nine, set up audio routing and MIDI spikes. We need to create our tracks and set up our folder stacks. If you've done this before, you can just import these tracks from a previous session like I'm doing here. Here I have my song track, then I have all my overheads going into a summing stack. Make sure the overhead tracks are bust into the summing stack. If you create the stack in the session instead of importing it, the busting will be done to you already. Then I have all the MIDI instruments. There's a superior drummer track we made earlier, and then the key spike tracks, which just have the logic sampler on default settings. I then have another default sampler track I use for the low end of the kick drum. Then I have separate instances of superior drummer for each drum. I know you can create one single multi-output superior drummer instance, but this is just what I have set up and it's quick and easy to import into other sessions. I have the toms on their own stack, mainly so I can move fills up and down with one fader. I then copy the MIDI we created in step eight into each superior drummer track and then delete the notes that don't pertain to that drum. For the key spikes, I copy the corresponding MIDI notes and then make those notes as high pitched and short as possible. Next, we'll go over what plugins I have loaded on these tracks. <coughs> 
Drum cover step 10, mixing your drums. I'm constantly tweaking these things, but here's what I've got right now. For the snare mic, I have a gate side chain to the snare spikes so I can cut out all the mic bleed. And then I have devil lock to compress and distort the signal. I then high and low pass it. For all the overheads, I have DF clarify to cut harshness, then compression, then EQ. The room mic is very snare heavy, so I have a gate side chain to the snare spikes to even out the signal. Then JS clip and DF clip to squash it, and then EQ. All of these mics go to the live drum stack, where they're compressed, heavily soothed, and EQ'd. The low end of the kick is just the default logic sampler. The low end fundamental is set at 86 hertz, so I boost the multiples of 86 and cut in between. The high cut here is at 258 hertz. For the drum samples, I'm using metal machinery. The high end of the kick drum is low cut at 258 hertz and then EQ'd and excited to bring out the attack. Now I can balance the attack and the pump of the kick drum separately. The snare drum sample is enhanced with David Taro and machine drum shots, then sent through DFQ, compression, reverb, and more EQ. The tom samples are enhanced with drum shots for machine and these guys. On the tom bus, I have Saturn for multiband distortion and then a light clipping. Next, we'll mix in the song and then go over the master bus. Drum cover step 11. Mix in the song and set up the master bus. On the track with the original song, I'm first just adding some gain. I then have Ozone 9 master rebalancing set on drums and turned all the way down. I do this twice to really get the drums out of the song. I then EQ the song, making sure I bring up the frequencies that pronounce the singer. Then I have a gate ducking the whole track down for every snare spike. I have a second gate ducking the track down for every tom spike. And finally, a multiband compressor ducking the low end of the song for every kick spike. And now on the master bus, I start by taking down the gain. Then I have Ozone 9 Advanced, where I just let the master assistant do what it wants, except I make sure the compressor isn't working too hard. I then have JST Bus Glue Mix and Joel Wanasek Bus Glue Mix, each doing a bit of compression. Having multiple compressors in sequence, each working just a little bit, will help make your master bus sound loud but clean. I then have Saturn doing some light distortion for some excitement, and then a bit of JST Clip for loudness. I then have Soothe to help get rid of any harshness, and then Pro L to make sure the output stays at 0 dB. Now we can finally bounce our song into the mix folder, and then use that in our video edit. Drum cover step 12. It's time to set up Final Cut for video editing. In Final Cut, make a new library and save it to the vid folder. Inside the library, select the event and drag in all the video clips and the final mix file. Select all the camera angles and the mix file, right click and select new multicam clip. Enable the checkbox for use audio for synchronization. Make sure the resolution and frame rate are correct. Create a new project and drag in that multicam clip. Double click the multicam clip to see all the video angles lined up. Select the final mix as the only sound output, then if needed, correct the position of the video clips in the timeline so the video matches the audio. Select your main camera and do any color correcting. I usually just raise the highlights and lower the shadows to get a nice contrast. Open the comparison viewer, save a frame, and color correct the rest of the camera angles to match. Now we can use the angle editor to run through the entire video and select what angle we want to play at what time. Do your best to choose the angles that showcase the most interesting things happening, but make Make sure that you use all the video angles you have to keep it interesting and fresh. Add your channel intro, then the band logo and the song title, and whatever you want to showcase for the end screen. And then next, we'll create a YouTube thumbnail. Drum cover step 13, make a kick-ass YouTube thumbnail. I have a photo that's sized to the optimal thumbnail dimensions, so I just open that file in Affinity Photo and I've got the perfect canvas. Drag in all the elements from the art folder. Now you can delete the original background, and then hide the album cover and band logo. Resize that screen cap we got from the video and then use the selection brush to select yourself and the drums. If you have lots of small details in your drum kit, this can take a few minutes. Just make sure you take your time and make sure you get everything selected properly. Then create a mask layer to get rid of the background. Adding a mask instead of deleting the background is non-destructive, so if you screw up your selection, you can just edit the mask to fix it. Put the album art in the background and position it around yourself however you think is coolest. Bring in the band logo and position that in front and center. If you want, add in some 3D effects and make it look even cooler. Now, add some contrasting glow to the drums layer and to the band logo to separate them from their background. Save the file and export the thumbnail as a JPEG less than 2 megabytes to fit in YouTube's upload standards. Next, we'll export and publish our video. Drum cover step 14, make a trailer and publish your video. In Final Cut, copy your video project. We're making a short video for Instagram so we can reduce the resolution to 720p. Select a segment up to one minute long and bring over the band logo and song title, then cut the footage before and after. I like to have the overhead camera displaying under the logo for the Instagram cover picture. Also, keep in mind that the Instagram cover pictures on your timeline are square, so shrink the logo so it doesn't get cut off when people are looking through your posts. Make a quick transition fade at the end and export the video. We can now upload the full video to YouTube and make sure you upload the thumbnail we created. We can then upload the trailer to Instagram and wherever else you want to post. It. Put an egregious number of YouTube tags and Instagram hashtags so people can find your video and if they like it enough, maybe they'll share it so you can grow your audience. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> if you have any questions or if you got any value out of this, then drop a comment below and tell me about it. I hope you learned something that you can apply to your own workflow. Or I hope you just enjoyed watching the process and seeing all the things that go into making one of these videos. Now, you can go make your own. So thank you for watching and good luck.